All right, let's explore how the robot Kai language is designed. This will give us a better understanding of how languages in general are defined in MPS. So now we'll focus on this module. It's a language definition of the Kaya language. There are three languages actually defined in this project and they all follow the same internal structure. So if I expand a language, we see there are several models underneath this module. Remember, models are nested in modules and models then contain nodes. So you can think about models as uh, packages in Java or folders in Python or Ruby. So they are something like a directory for root nodes. So for nodes that can sit direct directly in a model. So something like files. So if a root node is an equivalent equivalent of a file, then model is an equivalent of a folder. And modules then wrap them together. So language is a module that has several models. These models have each of them very specific purpose. They represent individual aspects of language definition. There are several of them and not all of them are visible because not all of them are always needed so only the ones that are most frequently used are available as soon as you create a new language. If you want more aspects they are always available on the language module you can create a few more aspect models in there. And if you look at other languages, well, they follow the same internal structure. Just maybe some of the aspect models are not there because they were not needed to define that particular language. So looking at the aspects, structure is the most important one. Without this one, the language cannot do anything. This is the place where the concepts out of which programmers build their programs are defined. So concepts like script, a library, an if statement, a repeat command, they are defined in the structure. And if we click on an if statement, for example, we'll see a definition of that concept. Definition of concepts in, in MPS follows the object-oriented paradigm. So you define a concept and give it a name. And then you can extend some other existing concept if you like. By default, all concepts have to extend base concept. That is like the common super concept of all concepts. Each concept can define its own properties, children and references. Properties express values, individual values of integer, string or boolean type, like repeat has a count property. A property that holds the number of how many you want to repeat things in the robot language. Child or children are, n are concepts that can be hooked underneath nodes of this concept. So if I create a repeat, there can be more nodes hooked underneath the repeat command in the body. Because body is a command list and if I click control click or command click on that I get to the command list to ins investigate how it looks like and command list is actually a co collection of nodes that are abstract commands so command list can have 0 to n commands and the repeat has exactly one such list in named as body if statement has three children one that holds condition which can be a logical expression exactly one logical expression and true branch is lists of commands and false branch is a list of commands as well now logical expression we can go there as well control B command B this is logical expression well it doesn't do much but you might be some you might be interested what logical expressions is there actually are in my language so we can pick show concept in hierarchy and we'll get this view 
of all the concepts that extend the concept that we are looking at. So logical expression, here it is, it's abstract, so you can't create nodes of logical expression. It's meant to be extended by other concepts, and there are some. There's heading, which is a concept that extends logical expression and has a direction child. So that is a child that can do, you know, orientation, check for orientation of robot in, you know, in the space. Or you can have is wall. Is wall is also a logical expression, which is just used to check whether there's wall ahead of the robot. There are no properties, no children needed for this particular node. And then there's uh, and and all. Two more logical expressions that together extend logical operator. So what is logical operator? It's an abstract co concept that extends logical expression and that introduces left and right logical expression. So here we're building some sort of binary logical expression. It has left and right, but it's still abstract. But it has two concrete subconcepts, and and all, who inherit the left and right children and add the semantics of and and all. Interestingly, these two concepts, and and all, and logical operator, they don't come from the robot Kaya language at all. They come from the extension Kaya and and all. We can quickly check that if we right click on the operator and pick show node in logical view. This will actually show us in the tree on the left hand side where the concept is located. Here it is. So you see it is the Kaya and all language. So this way you can locate concepts in the language. So to briefly recap, concepts have names. Concepts extend other concepts or implement concept interfaces. Uh, concept interfaces are very similar to concepts. So they can they they look and you know they can do pretty much the same thing as other concepts. So a concept can extend just one other concept but implement several interface concepts. You can mark whether a concept is rootable or not. Rootable concepts are those that can sit directly in a model. Those that have the value set to false have to be nested as children under some other node. You cannot create them directly in a model. Right, so when you go to a model and right click here, go new, the only thing you see here are rootable concepts. Script and library are the only ones available in this language. So if you go to script, you see it has this set to true. So it can be root. It doesn't have to. I mean, if the structure of the language allows script to be nested under some other node, then you can still do it. But this flag here allows it to be directly nested, directly created on the model level. Then alias is the thing that you will see in a completion menu when you do control space. So if I go to a script and I press control space, I type if, you know, I see the alias. I see the alias. If I don't have alias and rebuild my language, I will see the name of the concept because MPS has no other way to represent that thing in the completion menu. So now we see if statement, which is not very intuitive. So that's why aliases are good to have in your concepts. Well, and then you can specify properties, children and references. Routine call, for example, has a reference. This is, re you know, remember, this is a reference or pointer across the tree hierarchy. So this points to a definition of routine somewhere else. So here we have a routine definition. And here we have routine reference. So this is the concept routine call. So, so th this line 
is this concept, routine call. If I reveal the reflective editor, it says, well, this is the routine definition and the reference called, sorry, this is a routine call and it has a proper uh, reference called definition which points to turn around, which is this. Okay, well, that's what we need to know about the structure. Now, the next thing is the editor definition. Because, after all, we don't want the user to edit our code on the structure level. Because in that case, all the user would see would be something like this. A tree. And now, you know, this is what the user would have to edit. That's not very friendly. We want to provide some sort of editor that gives the user this view or some alternative view. You know, we are not restricted to just one view. We could have more if we wanted. For each concept in structure, typically there is at least one editor defined in the editor aspect. And you can switch between them. You know, if I go to script, I see the concept script here. I can either go to the editor aspect and search for script editor, or I can use the tabs down here and switch to the other aspect. So now I see the editor for script, which is this thing, right? So there's, there are two ways to navigate between aspects of a particular concept. You can see the structure or the editor. You can see the structure or the editor. And, you know, other aspects are there as well. You also have two ways to create things. Later on, when we'll be creating things in the editor, you can go to this plus symbol here and do, you know, create new things. Or you can right click on this model for editor and create the same set of new things here. Well, this menu is slightly bigger because some less frequently used items are not available in this menu. Well, there are some other concepts. There's constraints. Constraints allow you to restrict the structure of the language. So you can set, for example, the parent-child relationship. You can constrain what can be a parent of what. For example, the require command, which is used to import other scripts or libraries, like here, You've got a script and you import import some libraries of routines into the script. You can only do that on the top level of the script. You cannot go inside a while loop and do require here. You know, require command is not available there. It's only allowed here. Even though it is command, like all the other statements, like turn left, it also is also a command. Require, if we look at the definition, go to concept declaration. So let's look at how the concept is declared. Require is an abstract command. So it can be placed anywhere where abstract command is uh, ex expected, but not inside command lists that are not directly children of a script. So this is what this little piece of code here says. A require command can only be placed directly underneath the script in a command list of a script, not in a command list of a repeat command, for example. So you can constraints allow you to restrict parent-child re relationship. They allow you to constrain property values, and they allow you to constrain references where they can refer to. The behavior aspect adds behavior, functions or methods to concepts. So then you can in invoke methods on nodes, which is handy in many situations. Type system is used to declare types of values and expressions in your language and, you know, declare subtyping rules and inference rules and, you know, other types of relationship between types. 
intentions. They provide hints. Oh, they provide hints and context-aware fixes to the code, so that, for example, when I repeat a command two times, and the second one is underlined in yellow, and I can hit Alt Enter and have it fixed. Well, and then the generator. This is the place that declares how the code is translated into the target language, Java in our case. Unlike the other aspects, generator is a module. It's a whole module with its own models and can be structured into more models. It's just hooked underneath a language because it is closely related to that language. Okay, so that was a quick tour around language definition. We'll now explore them gradually in order to learn more about the aspects.